That is such a good song. I really can't get over it. It's like this mix of like like Axel Foley's theme from Beverly Hills Cop with like just the the full vibe of the 80s. It's such good synthesizer choices. Welcome to Meet the Tanukis. It's been a hot minute since we've had this show. As a reminder for those of you who are going to be joining us, uh, the whole point of Meet the Tanukis is to meet some people who work at GitLab. As you can see by, I've got, I just realized there are so many logos. There's one up in the corner now. Uh, I work at GitLab. My name is PJ Metz. I'm an education evangelist on the community relations team. And my job is awesome. And my company is awesome. And there's a lot of great team members that work with me. And so I designed this show to sort of get to know us so we could talk about our roles, how we got into tech and have like a nice fun little way that you can meet some people working at just what I assume is everyone's favorite tech company, uh, GitLab. As far as I can tell, everyone loves us. Um, I do get a lot of compliments on this hat. I recently, I attended KubeCon a few weeks ago, my first tech conference, guys, I was so excited. And I wore this hat and everyone kept coming up to us going, hey, where do I get one of those hats? I really like your hat. I was like, oh, I bought it on our on our online store. We don't have any hats. We have tons of stickers, so I was able to give out a lot of stickers. But uh, yeah, I do realize now that when I wear this hat, it hides half my face. So hold on, I got to do a quick wardrobe change here. And you'll still know it's a GitLab hat because you're a loyal viewer and you're here to hang out with us. Uh, but I do like that. I do like our little logo. I like our Tanuki. And I like my team members and the people who work with me. And this show, today's show, is specifically about a very important member of the community relations team and uh, a very important person in my entry into GitLab because he actually interviewed me and it was the one that I was the most scared of because uh, because he's got a strong presence and he's got a very like, he's just powerful. And I, and I really like this guy. Um, I felt like I impressed him though. So like, I was like, okay, it went well. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things today. We're going to talk about his background. We're going to talk about, uh, some event coming up that we're both involved in. And so, uh, without further ado, uh, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, please welcome John Coughlin. Ba -ba -da -da. <laughs> you made it. <sighs> How are you? What's going on? Oh no, I can't hear you. Is that my fault? Sorry, I, th I muted myself during the uh, intro video there. No, that's that's good practice, and you were right to do that. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, I, I appreciate the warm intro. I will try to be less intimidating today than I was during. Well, YouTube. so it's not that you were intimidating. It's that like you you really seemed to know what you were looking for or what you wanted out of it, and like I'm a scared little mouse most times when I'm having to talk to people that I have to impress. So like. That's more on me, but I, it just, it was cool because you seemed so, so knowledgeable about what, what was going to be good for this role. And I imagine they picked you because you are, and here's another official introduction. You are the manager of the developer evangelist team. And they were saying, we're bringing in this other evangelist, but he's going to be on education. So it was important that you had a hand in that. Yeah, that's awesome. And, um, yeah, I'm really happy that you're on the team and it's cool to just today I saw we hired a new developer evangelist in another part of the GitLab organization. And so it's cool to see the kind of job family growing and, you know, expanding into other areas. And, uh, you know, I think having you on the team as an education evangelist has been awesome for our GitLab for Education program. I'm hoping that um, these other folks that are joining in other parts of GitLab are going to be able to bring the same results to the places where they're trying to, um, you know, advocate and, and help people better understand GitLab. Absolutely. So uh, we need to get to know you as a human being. So I'm going to make you uh, the big boy here. Yep. And just tell us about yourself, your background, how you got to GitLab, all that good stuff. One, two, three, go. Cool. Well, uh, one thing about me that everyone should know is I don't normally rock a mustache. This is part of my Halloween uh, costume. I was Ted Lasso for Halloween, so I had to shave my beard down a little bit um, to really sell the bit. But um, thinking about keeping it around for a while. I don't know. If you have any feedback, leave it in the comments, tweet at me. Um, would love to hear from the community on that one. Yeah, a bit about me my you know, and my background. I'm from New York, lived here my whole life with the exception of, you know, like when I was in college, lived in New York City for a very long time, but now I'm living in the suburbs. 
with my family. I have two awesome kids. Um, and yeah, we, you know, we love it. We're, we're really lucky, really happy with where we're at. In my free time, I love to surf. Um, that's basically the only thing that I'll, you know, set aside, to, you know, it's the only time the hobby I'll make time for. Uh, everything else is kind of taking care of the family and, and working, um, you know, for professional background. I started as a trader on Wall Street, did a few years at not working on nonprofit United Way, uh, ran my own company. And that's when I really got involved in the tech community. It was a co-working space in Brooklyn called Dumbo Startup Lab. Um, got to work with a bunch of great developers, a bunch of great founders while I was there. And then that kind of catapulted me into this developer, you know, marketing technical evangelist um, field, which I've been in for about, I guess, six years now. Um, and yeah, it's been great to be a part of it, um, especially at GitLab. You know, we're such a community driven company. And so to be in a, you know, in a role where we can engage with the community and represent them in a company where a community means so much um, is just a great fit. And you know, I, I think in previous roles, you know, I would attend talks about DevRel and stuff and people would always talk about the importance of executive buy-in and like, we totally have that at GitLab. We have, you know, all the executive buy-in, you know, that we need and that filters down throughout the organization and everyone, you know, on our community relations team and everyone in the product and engineering teams and everybody across GitLab is so passionate about our community. It just makes for a great environment for people that do what we do. Um, and so I feel really fortunate to be a part of this team. That's fantastic. I love that you have a non traditional background. Like you, you started in finance and then you started uh, working at, uh, you said like a Dumbo startup lab and like you sort of fell into tech and it's so cool because like there's an important uh, uh, a group of people who didn't start out as computer science majors and, and followed the, the right path. Uh, people who have non-traditional backgrounds have very important contributions to, to tech insight and to bringing their outside knowledge into tech. Um, I didn't know that you were on Wall Street. That's pretty dope. <laughs> it was fun, but it was not where I wanted to kind of spend my entire career. Um, so really good learning experience, but um, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled with how things have worked out. feel really fortunate to be in the place that I'm in right now. And it's kind of like a dream come true. Um, even when I was, you know, when I was working at a nonprofit and looking to kind of break into the, you know, private sector again, to me, you know, tech was the place to be, um, you know, the tech community was really growing in New York, lots of smart people and interesting people, um, and great companies to work for. And so, you know, making that move from a nonprofit to a tech company was really hard. And so kind of the way that I was able to, you know, make that move was running my own business for a while and building up my network. And, um, and so, yeah, I was really fortunate to have that opportunity and, and really pleased that it all worked out kind of according to plan, although, you know, how nothing ever really best goes to plan. Um, best laid plans of mice and men. Uh, yeah, never, it doesn't always work out the way you hope, but often with the right work and, and paying attention to opportunity and taking opportunities where you can, uh, it can turn out a way that's better. Um, and so that's great. Um, so we're here to talk about you and to talk about GitLab, but something coming up soon that I think we're uh, both going to be a part of is part of is DevRelCon 2021. And we are in the community relations team and you're the manager of developer evangelism uh, at GitLab and I'm an education evangelist. And this is a term that you don't often see in developer relations. It's out there, but I think GitLab is one of the few places where I've seen it embraced as sort of the the de facto label for what we do. Um, let's talk a little bit about the difference between a DevRel and an advocate and an evangelist and, and how we see GitLab doing that uh, um, in our way. Yeah, so, you know, I, I think if you put a bunch of developer relations people in like a room or a Zoom, um, the very good chance the conversation will land on one of three things. Uh, metrics, how do we measure success would be number one. Number two is which part of the organization should we report into? Should we be in marketing? Should we be in product? Should we be our own function? Um, and then the third one is like, what do we call ourselves? Um, and so 
fitting that you put two you know evangelists in a room together and that's the first topic of conversation that comes up um you know i think at kitlab you know how we landed on evangelists was actually a very practical matter um you know we have a kind of convention at GitLab called uh, MessyFu. That's an acronym for mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive and few words. Um, and that's how we tried to name things. And so we already had a team of people called community advocates. And so, you know, developer advocate was, was out. Um, and I think, you know, we already had a you know, the community advocates were part of this community relations function. And so that made developer relations a little bit um, confusing. And so by process of elimination, we landed on um, developer evangelists. Um, so nothing really cool or insightful there. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think ultimately, you know, what you call the people can, you know, can matter, um, but it doesn't always matter. I think, you know, there's some organi organizations that are really intentional about what the function does. Um, and in that, you know, kind of case, you know, like Netlify with their developer experience team as an example, um, you know, I think maybe having that naming just right um, is super important. But for us, I, I don't think you'll find a ton of difference between what we do and what most classic DevRel or Dev Advocacy teams um are doing yeah and that that falls in line with my experience when i talk with other people who are in devrel about what they're up to and and what they're trying to create i realize it's pretty much exactly the same what i'm doing we just have a slightly different title also i love being able to say i'm evangelist because i can be like well i'm out spreading the good word of education at gitlab and uh it makes me feel like i'm like off on an adventure a little bit you know um <laughs> But yeah, here we are. We're going to be speaking at uh, DevRelCon, and I'm going to go ahead and show off their nice little landing page here. Uh, this is uh, a great, great event, and they do this pretty often. I think uh, they just had 2020 was Tokyo, but it was all it's virtual. It's usually virtual now because you do it through. Uh, it's made by Hoopy here, and they do this virtual series where they get to talk about all things DevRel. Um, have you? attended or have you presented at DevRelCon before? No and no. So unfortunately when DevRelCon, you know, when I first became aware of DevRelCon, it was an in-person event and it was I think in London um, and Tokyo were the two host cities. And so, and I think the London one was normally like maybe in November, but I remember a couple times it was in December, which created just like, Kind of a bottleneck because in the holiday season tends to be really busy um yeah. you've got you know kids at home um and so i have not been fortunate enough to attend in person um and then with virtual events you know in general i don't always prioritize attending those events because i know i can kind of consume the content um like at a time that you know suits my schedule perfectly mm -hmm. so while i haven't been to the event before i have watched many many of the past DevRelCon talks um because the, uh, you know you can find them on youtube um yep. and yeah it's uh, a super valuable resource to me when i was first learning the kind of field um and then as i became you know a manager and you know thinking about those big questions that we talked about earlier where do we report into and how do we work within that organization and what are the things we should be measuring um all of those kind of you know big you know topics or big questions that we have as a team or, you know I, I frequently will rely on um yeah. you know resources like devrelcon and the and the speakers um from this event as people to kind of guide me um, yeah in those decisions so um yeah all absolutely correct and one of the good things i think about virtual events uh lately is that the, the content stays available for so long um, and I, what I like about attending it uh, live is is there's a there's an interactive element to it. You can usually go and do like a virtual like uh, hallway where you can like run into people, or there's you know vendor booths, which it's not the same as going and collecting like 18 t-shirts and not having room in your luggage at the end of it. But uh, there there's ways to interact and to meet people, and I feel like a lot of people have. Uh, 
they've been forced to figure out virtual events, but I feel like a lot of places have have really done a great job figuring it out. But um, yeah, so it's it's all things developer relations. We've got uh, on day one, they're covering DevRel fundamentals, how to get noticed and hired and inclusion across knowledge and regions. Um, my talk uh, to get things started is going to be about how being a teacher and uh, uh, eventually helped me get into tech and all of my skills as an educator because I was a teacher for 11 years. I taught high school English. I taught uh, ESOL over in Korea, English as a second language. Um, and I lived in Korea for a year and a half doing that. And I feel like my years of being a teacher is taking, you know, I don't get it and bringing it closer to, I know how to explain that to someone else. And so I feel like that's really similar to what I do now. I take GitLab and I'm bringing it to students and professors and people in education and trying to get them familiar with something that they would otherwise not necessarily encounter. So whether it's explaining Shakespeare to a bunch of disinterested 17 year olds and two kids who are really into it. Thank you. You know who you were. Uh, now it's taking GitLab and actually there's people who are interested in learning about it, but they don't know where to start. And I see myself as uh, having a unique position where I can help introduce people to something different. Um, John, what is your talk about? So I'll be talking about the DevRel career ladder. And so that's something that was like one of the first big projects that I took on when I it kind of took on this um, leadership role on the developer evangelism team. Um, uh, career development is so important. And especially in this kind of time right now that we're in where there's so many, you know, companies that are becoming software companies and so many people that are looking to hire developers um and hire developer evangelists and companies you know that are getting funded by venture capitalists and so they're looking to grow their teams and um, building really innovative products that people want to go you know work with and advocate for and so you know i know how important it is to kind of make sure that our team feels um engaged and that their career plan they have clear career plans with clear goals um, and we can kind of work together on that. And so that was something I prioritized early on. And um, that's what I'll be sharing, you know, with uh, the DevRelCon community we'll be talking about. Why that career is. matter and then, you know, kind of what ours looks like at GitLab. That is one of the, the harder things about uh, working in developer relations right now is a sort of uh, amorphousness around what the DevRel or the advocate or the evangelist does. And uh, I was just literally on stream uh, an hour ago with um, Sam Julian, who's over at Auth0. And he was talking about how com uh, companies will often think, oh, we got to get a DevRel. And they do. And then they just kind of, I, I use the metaphor, use them like a hammer. And we need you making content. We need you making talks. And we need you doing this. And they just get kind of wielded in all these different ways without a lot of solid definition about what is best and what are we measuring? And and the more granular ideas about it, they just think, oh, we're just getting a spokesperson and we're gonna do whatever with them. So being able to define your own career ladder and specifically your position, I think when I'm looking at the developer evangelism team at GitLab, that's something that's very clearly defined between our three current evangelists. And now there's another evangelist coming on um, elsewhere in the company, this idea of you know exactly what it is you're going to be working on and we know the sort of fine to almost like a scalpel we know where you're going to be yeah Very and i think important. just as important I, I think that's super important it's also important for people to know what do i need to do to get to that next level and progress um and so just making sure that it's really clear what the expectations are for you in your current role and also make it clear this is what you need to achieve to you know progress to that next level um you know, is super important and get, making sure everyone's aligned around that. And then, you know, we have those kind of job families, as we call them, um, clearly defined. And then we'll look yeah. at, you know, each person's performance and see, okay, these are the areas, you know, where you're kind of meeting those responsibilities at your level. Um, and then, you know, these are the areas where maybe you're performing at the next level already. Um, and then what do we have to do to get, you know, all of those kind of areas where you're just at the current level up to the next level? Absolutely. And uh, absolutely. The, the, that 
since it's so amorphous about what a dev rail does sometimes, not knowing what the next step is can be really confusing for a lot of people. And uh, so so when you think about a, a dev rail uh, team, and when you think about like what's, what's the best way to, uh, I mean, honestly, what I'm trying to get at is like, give us a, a, a preview of something you're gonna talk about, something, some advice that you would you would be giving in this talk. So, you know, I think the crux of the talk is that right now we're in the middle of like the great resignation, right? I, I'm not sure if you've heard that term, but it's been written about in Harvard Business Review, Forbes, you know, a lot of major publications are kind of acknowledging that this is happening. Um, and so, more than ever, you know, to use this kind of sports analogy uh, from college sports, which I'm a big fan of and will be referenced in the talk, um, <laughs> people have to recruit their own players, right? So I know you're a Florida football fan. I've seen the GIF. Um, you know, and I think in college sports, um, we have all of these, you know, th there's this thing called the transfer portal where players can kind of just, you know, be playing for one program and decide they want to leave and go to a different program. Uh, and it's made it really easy for players to move from one school to another. And the workforce is kind of, you know, like that on a, you know, mega scale. And so, you know, these coaches in college or, you know, leaders on, you know, in, in different organizations need to be constantly not just looking to bring new talent in, but also keeping the talent that they have. And having this clear career progression, you know, is one of the things. I think there's probably a few ingredients. Um, you know, you, you need to have good culture and, and values. You know, autonomy, mastery, and purpose are kind of like things that I often think about. That's from Daniel Pink's book, Drive. Um, but a lot of that theory in that book informs my leadership style and how I try to, you know, align my team around different goals. Um, but that purpose piece, you know, the mastery and purpose pieces are both informed a lot by this career ladder and how do people progress through an organization, show mastery, you know, have this purpose to continue to, um, you know, move forward in their careers. And so, yeah, so that we'll be kind of framing that, you know, the importance of the ladder and then going through the practical steps of what it takes to build one. Fantastic. This sounds like a real, like I'm going to be attending your talk uh, for sure, because I'm very early in my career. I knew what it took to be a great teacher. Uh, this is a whole new thing for me. I decided that, you know, 35 years old to change everything. Um, so I'll definitely be attending your talk. Um, and there's a bunch of other great talks. Like there are so many talks at this event. It's three days. It is from uh, like, like four in the morning, like Pacific time, all the way to like five in the afternoon Pacific time. There's talks across time zones that you can attend. Uh, the schedule uh, is available on the website. I'm going to go ahead and show that in one second so we can take a look together. But yeah, day one, day two, day three. And they'll tell you if you're looking at the schedule, the topics that will be covered during that day. But yeah, starting at 10 UK time, going all the way to, yep, 23, 25 UK time. That's 13 hours of content, y'all in a single day. So you can't see it all, all at once, but you can attend uh, during your time zone for sure. And it looks like, ooh, you've got a great spot. I just realized where your spot is here. Yeah, so after sitting through 13 hours of content, <laughs> I will uh, be bringing it all to a close in the grand finale of day one. That's right, we expect fireworks, John, please. Have something to, to launch during it. Um, but I was looking through and I found a couple uh, what I consider interesting uh, talks that I think are going to be really useful. Um, let's let's talk about this. So Veritiago, who is a developer advocate lead at OutSystems, is going to be talking about uh, the idea of specialization and career paths for teams. And that's something that I think GitLab has, like I said before, done really well. Each of our uh, evangelists knows where their wheelhouse is and knows what they're doing and and not focusing on. It's not kind of a, a free-for-all. So as an advocate and as a, an evangelist, knowing what you're going to specialize in and, and what the career paths look like for you is very important. I think this is going to be a good talk. Yeah, right on. And um, certainly, you know, dovetails nicely with the content that I'll be talking about. Um, I think there's another talk um, from the VP of DevRel at HashiCorp that's also going to um, kind of touch on this 
topic. Um, that one is by Adam Fitzgerald. Um, so if you're interested in learning about, um, you know, kind of career ladders and, and career progression, there's going to be um, lots of really good content um, throughout the event. And you can catch it live if it fits your time zone, um, or you can catch it, um, you know, after the fact. And I'll certainly be checking out Adam's talk to see what I can learn um, to Absolutely. improve our career uh, ladder at GitLab. It's so interesting when you think about events like this, uh, there's a tendency to look at the speakers as a uh, an expert in like certainly what they're talking about because you're going to them for their opinion on on whatever their their content is. But also it's, you know, the people speaking are also like, oh, I'm excited to listen to this person and I'm excited to listen to this person because it's all about continuous learning and continuous improvement and someone somewhere has it figured out and and you're still learning so it's great that not only do we get to speak at this but we get to you know be attendees and and talk and learn about it as well um this one really uh is important to me uh purposeful personal branding because uh when i started at gitlab uh one of the first things i did was i talked to uh will who is our uh, social media person and I was trying to understand exactly what my role includes. I was trying to pitch the idea of being on Twitch and, and doing this show and other things. I was trying to understand what was expected of me. I'm coming from an education background where the way I use social media was uh, not controlled, but there were a lot of like very specific rules about what I could, could not do on there. And I was trying to understand what to do. And the way Will explained it to me is like, well, you're a developer evangelist we selected you because we believe that what you're creating and doing personally aligns with us and we want you to carry the the gitlab flag out there for us and just keep being yourself and it was this lightning bolt moment for you i was like oh like it's just it's just be me but be me for you know gitlab and so this idea of purposefully branding yourself and and making sure your online presence is exactly what you want it to be is going to be really helpful for me. So I'm very excited for Cassandra from Rocket Mortgage's talk. Right. right on. I think um, one that I'm super excited about is Jordana uh, Fung's talk, and she is going to be presenting on how to win in arguments, which I think is such an interesting topic um, and certainly something, um, you know, that. I don't think I often enter arguments expecting to win. Normally, I don't think anyone wins when you get in an argument. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think when you're in a community role, you know, I think one of the things that I always talk to my team about is like when we're responding to, you know, community members online, uh, which is a big part of the you know developer evangelism role at GitLab. Like, we're not trying to. You know, sometimes it depends on the type of question, but if someone's, you know, has a, uh, you know, question and they just need help, you know, we're going to go and give that person uh, the, all the help that we can provide. But when there's, you know, it tends to be like these kind of, you know, critical comments or uh, things that, you know, maybe aren't totally fair. I always try to encourage the team to go in with the mindset where you're not trying to convince this person who's got a really strong, you know, kind of negative opinion um that they're wrong and they and they should you know see things the way that we're seeing them i think the important thing is that we present you know factual accurate information in order to read over the vast majority of people that are just going to be reading that conversation and not commenting on it um and so i'm curious to see if jordana will touch on that like i think you know that's such an important part of these kind of you know discussions that can become contentious online that I think gets lost. Like everybody tries to kind of always, or it seems like many people try to convince others, of, you know, to kind of come to their side. And that's like, I think the most important thing is to try and win over those people who maybe haven't formed an opinion yet. Um, and who are just, you know, reading through this conversation or discussion or thread in good faith and, and coming to their own conclusion right then. Um, like those are the, you know, we also have to try to win over those people. Yeah. Um, there's an awareness of audience that often doesn't take place when you are focused on the, the person that you're talking to. Uh, it reminds me of a scene from a movie, I think it was called Thank You for Smoking. And it was a satirical look at um, lobbyists uh, working for 
uh, tobacco and firearms. And it's this, it's a film, but there's a scene where one of the lobbyists is talking to his son. And he's like, let's say we're having a debate. And he, he lays out what the debate is about ice cream. And he's like, honestly, I'm not trying to convince you that you should change your opinion. There's a whole audience listening to this. I'm trying to convince them. And especially in like a forum or in a situation where someone's come with a question, you're not just addressing that person. If it's written down, if it's in a forum, if it's on Hacker News or something, people will come and read that conversation and they're going to have their own conclusions that they come to. So it's that awareness of of the audience is a very important part of interacting in the public sphere. I think that's a fantastic, fantastic way to approach uh, working with the community, John. And yeah, this talk from Jordana, I, I, I hope she talks about it too, because I think that's really important. You know, that's, that's the win, 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 right? The all three wins is where you're happy. The person you're talking to is happy and everyone who else saw it is happy as well. There, so um, I can't wait to go back and watch that movie again. It's been probably, a, I don't want to beat myself, but it's been a while since I've seen that. So um, I'll have to go back and revisit that scene. And then I start using that anecdote when I'm explaining this thought process to people. Yes. And that's, that's what convinced me to stop arguing with random people on Facebook. I was like, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want people to perceive me outside of my ability to, to control that a little bit. Um, one of the days, I think it's day three, is talking about, um, and let me go back to the main page real quick, is about regional DevRel. And this idea that different approaches are needed depending on where the world your de developers are. And oftentimes there is a very uh, uh, US, European centric view for a lot of this. And there are some great, great talks here. Uh, uh, K. Bab and Bob Meg. Boye, um, who's a regional manager from the Angel Hat Corporation, Ankan Shabasan, and, and this idea that you are not just uh, the community of people who are literally geographically around you. There's a community out there that's very important to reach who are not necessarily uh, where you are. And so um, Kay's talk on Africa, I'm very interested in learning much more about this um, because I do think that there's a lot of growth that's going to be coming from Africa's developer ecosystem. So I'm very excited for this talk. Cool. Yeah. And I'm excited for Akanksha's talk. She's actually a member of the GitLab Heroes program and has yes. spoken um, at some of our um, GitLab events in the past. So super stoked for her to get a, a platform like DevRelCon to share the work that she's doing. She's an amazing evangelist. Um, so definitely tune in for that talk if you can make it. Awesome. Fantastic. I mean, there's just so much going on. Uh, if you haven't registered yet, go register. Um, like I said, it's next week. It's three days next week. Uh, register. And like John said, if you can't attend live, that's okay. You can still consume the content afterward. But um, what makes this great is it's a chance to uh, interact and it's a chance to show that this is useful information. Even if you're not in developer relations, even if you're just in tech or if you're trying to figure out say you're a student and you're trying to figure out where you're going to head next what you're going to do there's so much valuable information at this event and look it's got me it's got john it's got all these other speakers that we just talked about it's a wealth of information and it's all right at your disposal you got to go attend y'all yes plus one community is the way that's the future it's like the strongest mode that you can have for a product um driven company and so every company in the next 10 years, like just like the last 10 years has been about every company becoming a software company, the next 10 years are going to be about every company becoming community driven. And you can That's see right. that already. I know PJ is skeptical on the Web3 stuff, but I saw McDonald's dropping NFTs. Oh, that's um, right. There. There's a McRib NFT. Him. And, you know, you have these um, DAOs popping up. You know, uh, there's a great developer DAO that I'm a member of. Um, so yes, I, I think community is clearly the future for, uh, you know, a lot of companies and organizations. And so great, great way to invest in yourself is by tuning in hearing from some of the experts in the field at DevRelCon. Absolutely. Absolutely. John, thank you so much for agreeing to be on my little show. Uh, thank you to those of you who did tune in. I really hope your Ted Lasso costume went over well, because Ted Lasso is one of my favorite shows of all time.
It was surprisingly um, a hit, so um, it was worth uh, worth shaving for. I don't know. I think keeping the mustache might be a good idea. Um, I bet it pairs really well with the aviators, which I assume you wore all night. <laughs> Folks, uh, we're going to go ahead and, I think, sign off. Um, you got to check out DevRelCon. You got to go sign up. You got to see all these amazing uh, uh, speakers and uh, people who are – building community right now and if you want to be a part of that community uh there's no better time to start than today uh john final words parting advice uh smart remarks just want to say thank you super fun i always love hanging out with you vj but thank you for this platform to kind of connect with more people um around the get loud community and your, your network and uh yeah super stoked to be a part of the uh meet the tanuki show so thanks for the invite yeah Awesome. Well, with that, we will say goodbye to everyone. Thank you for tuning in and keep an eye out on this channel for more Meet the Tanukis as we move into the winter season. Thanks for coming, y'all. Take care.